I swear this going live thing was so much easier a few weeks ago. Like, I don't know where the button went. So now I'm like scrambling to set up a tripod. I swear there was a button a week or two ago on my laptop that was like a camera <laughs> and it's not there now. I don't know where it went. I cannot find it. So I don't think, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna be able to see the chat room today. I'm so confused. Like, why isn't it there? It's always there. Anyway, so let's see. Technology, right? And now I'm like looking at the camera when I should be looking at this little camera over there. So you, if I like, am like looking off to the wrong side, sorry about that. I'll try to remember to look at the camera and not the screen. I don't know why the camera's not there today. I hope I can find a way to um, read your comments while I'm here because that's kind of the whole point is I want to talk to you guys. So I don't know why it's not going. Um, I can see that a couple people are joining. Hello. Please comment so that I can maybe see if you're commenting or not and maybe I can find a way to read it on my laptop even though, okay, oh yay, it popped up on my screen. Hi, Ruth. Ruth sees me and I read your comment, so I guess we're good to go. It's just really strange that I couldn't get it to work on my laptop this morning, like I have been able to do the last few times. So it's always something, isn't it? It's, I need a camera person. I need my the Pacific Northwest, nice. So it's early there for you, right? Like 8.05 in the morning, terrific. Thanks for joining me so early. My windows are open, it's so bright. Sorry about all the squinting. Hello, Brandy, hello. So, um, uh, because you guys are here um, and you took the effort to be here, I want to tell you guys a secret because you made the effort to be here. So the secret is duh, that tomorrow, there's a giveaway going on tomorrow. It's going to be, I just filmed it a few minutes ago. So it's going to go up on the channel tomorrow morning and you'll have two weeks to enter. And it's just like the other giveaways, although there's yarn and a book. And oh, a couple people from Mississippi. Oh, you guys should like get together and have a crochet round table. <laughs> that would be fun. So tomorrow there will be a giveaway and it includes yarn and a book. Yeah, the book is one of mine. And the reason I'm adding a book um, is because, hi from Houston, hello. Um, because you may have read on my newsletter last week, the subscribers to my newsletter read first. Um, does anyone know? Does anyone is subscribing to my newsletter at ellengormley.com? When you like subscribe for updates um, on the newsletter on the website, I try to send big notes. Hi, Patricia from Florida. Hello, everybody that I'm missing. I am kind of reading you while I'm talking, but I am. Um, I'm glad that you all are here. Welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for showing up. When I do these live posts, it's like a party. <laughs> and I'm like, is anybody gonna show up to my party? And then I'm always so thrilled when then you get when you guys show up. So thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. My new book, yes, Dawn, ding, ding, you got it, yes. So in my newsletter, I um, mentioned, I shared that I have a new book coming out, yay. So finally, the, um, finally, the contract is signed and I'm allowed to tell you that I have a new crochet book coming out. Ah, I just dropped my camera thing. A new book, crochet, coming out next summer. So uh, this has been in the works for such a long time. Like patience is not my strong suit. So this has been going on since like October. Like I've been working on all the background stuff. Thank you for the congratulations, you guys. So I've been working on all the background and the swatching and the sketching and the proposing and and then we've been going round and round about the contract and this this point and that point and uh, it's been it's been a long time coming. But good things come to those who wait. So I'm hoping that good things will come for me and for you. And so I can't tell you like the topic exactly yet. Um, I would say keep an eye on Amazon because. Um, I'm doing the book with Interweave Press, Interweave Publishing, and they tend to put um, 
things up on Amazon like really early. They'll put like a cover or they'll put a placeholder with the title. So if you check Amazon, and on Amazon you can just type in my name, Ellen Gormley, in the search box, and it'll pull up all of my books and stuff, except for one. I don't know why it doesn't pull up Go Crochet Skill Builder um, on my profile, but that's mine too. Um, but if you type in Ellen Gormley, then it'll pull up all my books and you can click on my name as author and it'll list all my books except for Go Crochet Skill Builder. So keep an eye on those um, on Amazon because I'm sure that inner we still there. Okay, are you still there? Okay, so because, okay, sorry. So because my computer's not working, I couldn't find the live button for some reason, even though I've done that before. My, I'm using my phone and my phone just rang. So I, I don't know, like it just, I guess it kicked me off and then kicked me back on. So I apologize for the interruption. I guess after this today, I need to go on YouTube and search for a video on how to do better live posts. So um, thank you so much for your patience and bearing with me today. So while I was saying, um, when I interrupted myself, is that um, Amazon will put up a sneak peek or a preview and will leak out the title long before um, I'm able to really, so as soon as they say it, then I'm allowed to say it. But I'm not allowed to say it until they say it first. Got it? <laughs> so that's the trick to crochet and knit publishing. Like it's all supposed to be a secret until the publisher like leaks it Air says it and then it's good to go. So I can't tell you the content of the book. I will say that it is a crochet book. I will say that it will have patterns in it. Um, I've already designed and sent four patterns um, to the publisher and so those will be, hi Jackie, those will be um, the, the projects that they're going to use for promotional stuff. So those are the first four projects. So they'll already start like taking photographs and creating promotional stuff while I'm still designing the rest of the project. So the first four I'm very happy about. And so um, I admit that I get really nervous about knowing that I have, that I have to design a big collection because I mean, I just, I have all the same fears that everybody else has. Hi, Elizabeth, um, about, you know, like writer's block and creative block and are they going to be good and are people going to like them and am I going to like them? Am I going to be sick of them by the time I'm done? And I'm really pleased with the first four projects. Like I can, I can handle it. I can tolerate them. So sometimes when I design things, I'm like so over it by the time I'm done with it that I'm just like, oh. I don't even know if I like it anymore. I feel like I've I lose perspective when I when I design it so carefully. Like I loved it in the beginning, and then by the time I made it and wrote it and edited it, I'm like I'm done. But these these are really I feel good about these, so I'm excited and hopeful. And um, I know that you all like a variety of things, so I'm hoping that you will like them too. I'm working really hard to um, have a variety of skill levels in the book so that everyone who crochets will find something that they enjoy in the book and um i probably shouldn't say too much more that way i don't accidentally say too much <laughs> but anyway so the book is um gonna take me the rest of the summer to write and it should be uh, done and in the hands of the publishers by the time the kids go back to school in the fall and um then it will be publishing, I think like June or July of next year is the target for now. So who knows what life will bring between now and then, but um, June or July of next year um, is, is when it should go, when it should be in stores and when it should be um, digital and, and all of that. So I'm excited. So love a challenge, but then you like simple too. Oh, totally. When it comes to projects, especially for me, knit projects, like I want to learn something new, but I also want to like have a successful project at the end. So, um, hey, I'm glad you're here. You're usually on the road, but you're here today. Thank you so much. So 
Um, yeah, I, but I think that's true of like all things like Sudoku puzzles. I love those, but only if I can do it. <laughs> like if it's if it's too easy that it's boring, well, that's not fun. But if it's too hard that I can't accomplish it, then that's not really fun either. So I totally agree. When it comes to knitting and crochet projects, I want just enough interest to keep my interest, but I don't necessarily want to like <laughs> sprain my brain <laughs> trying to get it down. And that's why I love I love the look of knitted lace, but I do not have the attention span to knit knitted lace. Like I I'm on the go. Like I can't just knit 30 stitches of a complex lace pattern and then drop it and go pick up the kids or go to a soccer practice or go to a doctor's office or I my brain does not do that. And Lord bless you if you're one of the people who can knit lace and keep track of it and not lose your place. But I need something that I can read my stitches. So I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, read your stitches. Um, knitters and crocheters say that a lot, but like being able to look at a finished piece of work or a finished row and be able to see exactly what was done and read the stitches back um, is a skill and I don't have that in knitting nearly so much as I do in crochet. Crochet, I can even look at it from the backside and know what it is. But um, knitting, it's much more difficult and knitted lace, it's impossible for me to read it. I don't, I can't look at a piece of knitted lace and say, yeah, that's a yarn over and that's a slip SSK and that's a PSSO and like I can't, I can't do that in knitting. But in crochet I can and so I, I can crochet and probably you all too, like in the car or on the go or while watching TV because I, I can read it easily enough that I don't get lost, but with knitted lace, I get lost. Anyway, the point, <laughs> I'm circling back to the point. The point is that the book hopefully will satisfy everyone in terms of um, skill level so that um, out of the book, you will be able to find something that you love and enjoy. Um, and I'm holding back one more word, one more sentence that I shouldn't say. So, um, anyway, when I buy um, when I buy a book, I try to think, okay, the book is X price. Say it's I don't know twenty dollars. If the book is twenty dollars, and I know that I could buy patterns for like maybe five or six dollars online PDF then I want to be able to know that I'm going to like at least, you know, five, four patterns out of the book to make it worth the $20 price tag. So I very much believe in that philosophy. So I don't know how much they're going to retail my book for yet at this point. But for, in, for instance, if it's a $20 book, I want you to have at least, you know, five projects in it that if you were to pay $5 per project as a PDF or something, that you're getting a better value in buying my book than just buying one at a time. So my goal is always for you to be able to enjoy at least um, more projects than the value of the book. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So I, and I know that people have different things that they like. So I try to balance enough easy projects, enough complicated projects, enough um, uh, of a one aesthetic, you know, so that everybody has a reason to go ahead and just buy the book because, hey, there's at least enough projects in it that, that it'll be worth your, worth your money. So I'm going to flip this. I've got a little notification there. Okay, there it goes. So secret uh, secrets and lies today. <laughs> well, no lies, but all secrets. So, um, so the secrets for today. So the book is going to be coming out. Yay. So that's new. I've been holding that as a secret for a very long time. Then another secret is there's going to be a giveaway tomorrow. So that's going to go live tomorrow. Um, and I hope that you'll enjoy that one a lot. So hopefully you'll subscribe and like and all of that. Um, the um, the live view today, you're probably hearing about it because you hit the notification bell, so I appreciate that. The other secret for today is not nearly as big of a secret, but the other secret is that um, I filmed another unboxing today, so that will be coming out soon. Let's see, so if I do a giveaway tomorrow, that's Wednesday, 
then I can maybe do the unboxing on Friday. Maybe I can get that edited by then. And then I know I want to um, do, I have out my double-ended hook for you because some of you have mentioned wanting to see some double-ended hook tutorials. So I found my double-ended hook. And so I um, am ready to, to film some of those for you. Um, I want to do more Bruges for you. I want to do more gauge lessons for you. So there's so much that I want to do still. So um, what else did I want to do? Is there any other secrets you need to know? Yarn companies are really starting to come around now that, uh, I mean, I, I know all of them and I've worked with them for a while, but um, they're starting to get on board with the YouTube channel and want me to do unboxing and swatching. So there should be a lot more of that coming up in the next um, month to six weeks, I think. So right now is when all of the yarn companies are... Um, are showing their fall and winter lineups of yarn. So just like fashion designers who put out like a fall collection and a spring collection, yarn companies do the same thing. And so, hi DJ, hello. So um, the, all the yarn companies are, gather, are putting together right now their fall and winter yarn collections and they will be debuting them the middle of June. I'm trying to think of the, the exact date because what happens is they, they all belong to the National Needlework Association, and the big conference for that is in June or July, I forget which now. Um, and I've gone the last several years, but I don't think I'm going this year. It's in Cleveland this year. And that's when they debut all their, all their uh, fall and winter lines of yarn. And then they do another show in January, usually in Cal Southern California, and they show all their spring and summer lines at that show. So I usually go to the fall and winter one, and I'm not going this year, but um, but I know that that's their target. That's like when all the yarn companies are trying to have all their ducks in a row. And so right this minute, um, designers are finishing up, hopefully, um, and having their all the um, designs that the yarn companies are commissioning so that when the new yarns come out, um, there will be patterns ready to go to show at the show, but also debut at yarn stores and on their websites for you all. So um, it's a really, I think June or July is just a really super exciting time for yarn. And even though it's hot, do you crochet when it's hot? Um, even though it's getting warmer here in this hemisphere anyway, um, and maybe people slow down their crocheting or knitting a little bit this time of year, um, we're really looking forward to fall and winter, which is really like the boom time of the year for knitting and crocheting and yarn. So um, do you knit and crochet during the summer? Is it too hot? <laughs> do you sit in your air conditioned uh, crochet hot or cold? I do too. I do. Um, do you sit in the air conditioning and crochet hopefully? Now some of you though, I know like from Florida and Arizona, it's hot like most of the year. Like if you didn't crochet when it was hot, you'd never crochet. So you have to crochet even when it's hot and I get it. it and it's, um, so it's just us Northerners that, that really feel the, the, the um, temperature. Crochet inside and outside. I absolutely will crochet outside even during the summer. I try to use um, cotton when I can, but but the truth is, as a designer, I'm in the in the uh, summer. I'm often designing with fall and winter yarns so that they can be published in fall and winter. So, uh, as much as I would like to say no, I don't use alpaca and wool when it's 90 degrees out. <laughs> yeah, I do, <laughs> and you probably do too. So, um, um, when I'm outside, though, when I'm at the pool or whatever, I try to bring a like a white. Um, a white or a light colored pillowcase with me and put that over my lap um, to keep me cool because you don't want to put I mean the beach towel is fine but it gets a little hot so I try to keep a nice cool cotton layer on my lap and then the crochet or knit on top of that 
I try to keep a glass of ice water handy, not only to drink from to keep myself cool, because of course you gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> Crocheting is a sport after all, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I know people would like throw down <laughs> if they heard me say crocheting is a sport, and, and I'm not suggesting it's a sport, but you do need to stay hydrated no matter what. So I have a glass of ice water next to me to keep my body temperature cool, and then also, I will use the ice water to wash off my hands every so often because of the whole like sunscreen gross, you know, gotta, gotta wear sunscreen. Um, it's good for your hands, certainly, you know, and, it, and it's fidgeting burns calories. So crocheting burns more calories than just sitting still. And gesturing like a wild woman burns more calories than, than sitting still. Anyway, so when I'm at the pool, I try to put cotton uh, layer on my lap like a pillowcase or a sheet and then put my crochet over the top and then have a um, glass of water ice cold to keep myself cool and also um, to be able to wash my hands okay you rinse my hands off um, to keep all the sunscreen off my work and um, any other tips for crocheting in hot weather motifs uh, of course, I love motifs and to be able to work on something little and then putting it aside is awesome because then you never have to like put it down on your lap. Like you can just crochet it and put it aside in your bag. And so uh, motifs and, um, and are great. Oh yeah, wear a hat. Absolutely. Keep the sun off you. Go and wear your sunscreen. Um, so keeping um, motifs are great for keeping the item clean so you don't have to set it down on your lap. Like I can't tell you how many summers in a row though I have been working on a wool blanket. Like I just finished last summer that the Nouveau Chic blanket that I made for Marley Bird's Chic Sheep yarn. And I made that last summer while I was on family vacation. So where were we? We were in Hilton Head. Is that where we were? I think we were in Hilton Head, but then we stopped in uh, Lake Cumberland, Kentucky on the way home to hang out with family. And so I had this wool project with me the entire vacation. And so um, you got to do what you got to do, but it was motifs. So it wasn't so heavy on my lap when I was sitting at the pool. Anyway, so, um, so when you're crocheting outside in the summer or when it's hot, those are a few tricks that I use and I don't know if it works for you. Some of you mentioned that you sit in a cool basement, which is so smart. Um, always the coolest place in the house. Get yourself some air and some fan and keep the air moving. Um, but yes, maybe some people slow down their crocheting a little bit in the summer or maybe switch to other projects. But those of you who live in like Florida or Arizona, um, you gotta crochet all year long. Otherwise you'd never crochet because it's warm so much of the time. Anyway, so those are the secrets revealed for today. Um, and I hope you're excited about the uh, double-ended hook. I'm gonna do a couple of those things. Practice new stitches by doing cotton and have a new dishcloth. Oh, absolutely, that's a great trick for um, crocheting when it's hot out. Crochet and cotton, practice new stitches, like make a swatch and make the swatch the size of a dishcloth. And so as you're practicing, then you have a dishcloth to show for it. So brilliant, absolutely, that's a great idea. And so, and then you can throw it in the wash too if you get sunscreen on it or sweat on it or something or chlorine, you know, from the swimming pool. So um, yeah, that's a great idea, very good. Also like um, baby hats would be great for the summer too because usually those are cotton or soft and cool. So absolutely, hello, welcome. Um, I'm actually getting ready to wrap up here in a moment. I've already shared some uh, secrets. So if you missed uh, the first part of this uh, live stream, go back and see some of the secrets. And I'm gonna see if I can put a poll. Maybe I should put a poll here on this live stream. So you make crocheted winter hats during the summer. Well, of course, because then they'll be ready for winter, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, do you use wool generally? Huh? Wool in the summertime? Does it does summertime change which fiber you choose? So um, we need to talk about fibers one day, don't we? Also, um, my coaching clients are all busy right now submitting designs for magazines that are fall and winter. So that's exciting. So 
If you're unaware, I also do coaching for people who want to be crochet professionals, whether tech editors or designers or teachers or um, writers, you know, because they still have to, people still need to write the articles that go in the magazines and books. And so um, I take on people who want to become crochet professionals and I answer whatever questions they have and help them get to whatever level of crochet professional they would like to be. And so I have um, a handful of crochet uh, coaching clients right now. I can only do so many because they get, they get a lot of my time. And so I answer a lot of questions for them and show them examples and critique things. So, um, and people are often asking me like, why are you, why would you do that? Like, why would you, um, why would you let people hire you to tell you how to do your job? <laughs> And the truth is, yes, they're going to um, become crochet professionals. And yes, theoretically, they could compete with me for, for work. And I'm, I'm okay with that because, frankly, um, there's the more the merrier. You can never have too many friends and colleagues. Yeah, they totally could end up my boss one day. You never know. But then I'll know some people. So it's great to network. And also, I feel like if I can help... Um, teach them some of the professional pitfalls that I've either done or managed to avoid, um, then it just makes the industry better as a whole. You know, it makes us all more ethical and more, um, more valuable. We give more value to our work when we do it right and well and professionally. So I'm okay with it. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So if you're interested in coaching and becoming a coaching um a mentor of mine, a client, coaching client, you have some goals that you'd like to increase your Etsy sales or you want to get into working at doing craft market bazaars or publishing or writing or if you'd like to write a book one day, all of that stuff, I can talk you through it. I've been there for most of it. I've never gone the market or bazaar route just because it just never fit our lifestyle, but it definitely was on my radar and I have clients who do that. So it is a valuable outlet for your crochet work, but um, that's not one that I've pursued, but that's okay because you can still do it. A coach is also somebody who like cheerleads you on and uh, poses powerful questions and says, hey, have you thought about this? Or while you're thinking about this, um, don't forget the possible consequences of X, Y, Z and you know, let that inform your decision about it. Um, and everything from, you know, they asked me, hey, do you have an email for so-and-so at whatever yarn company? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Here it is. <laughs> so um, because I'm in the industry, I actually have information to share. So anyway, if you're interested in becoming a crocheting coaching client, give me an email at ellen.gocrochet at gmail.com and let's talk about it and see if coaching is right for you. And then you can also go to my website, ellengormley.com and on the shop page, you can look at, um, you can look at the um, coaching description, but I do ask you to contact me first before you pay the money because I wanna make sure that you're um, that your goals are something that I can help you with, you know, so if, if your goals are something very different um, And I don't feel like I'm equipped to handle them that then, then I'll suggest an alternative or something, but um, I don't want you to think that um, That I take just everybody no matter what like I'll take you only if I think that I can help you because that's fair, right? <laughs> so anyway, if you're interested in crochet coaching, give me an email and anything else for today before we wrap up? Anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to ask before we wrap up? Thanks again so, so much for being um, subscribers and viewers and commenters and sharing videos with your friends so that they can learn tips and tricks too. I really appreciate every single one of you. Thanks so much for being here today for this live stream. So it's like a party and I'm always so um, blessed and honored and excited when someone shows up. <laughs> so thank you so much. And um, you'll see a new video from me tomorrow. It will be a giveaway. You'll be seeing an unboxing hopefully on Friday. I think I'll have it edited and ready to go by then. And then a uh, double-ended uh, crochet hook 
and they also call it crochet <laughs> um, and they it's it's really similar to Tunisian but anyway I'm gonna try and do some videos for that I'll at least do a beginner photo a uh, beginner video as soon as possible and uh, stay tuned so thanks everybody have a great day have a great day see if I can figure out how to turn it off <laughs>